Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And we're going through the entire book of Revelation, and we're already in Revelation chapter 19, if you can believe it. Wow. Uh, if you've been with us since the beginning, congratulations. Uh, it's a scary book that often gets avoided. People don't read it. People uh, say, well, I don't know anything about it. And yet... Um, just taking it slow, right? It's not so bad. We're just taking it slow, a little bit at a time, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, uh, asking simple questions and just using common sense and what we already know about the Bible. Revelation 19, uh, the heading is rejoicing in heaven. Chapter 19 says, After this I heard what seemed to be a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven crying out, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For his judgments are true and just, for he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they cried out, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah, and from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both small and great. Remember, this is the end of Babylon. The previous chapter, Revelation 18, was about the fall of Babylon. And so that was the end of a one world government. That was the end of false religion on the earth. And uh, reading chapter 18, all the inhabitants of the earth are sad. Right? They're lamenting, they're crying out, they're like, boo-hoo, everything's gone, right? But of course they're sad, right? They're the home team. <laughs> they're the home team. They thought they had the home team advantage. But the away team, that's chapter 19's story. Chapter 19 is the reaction of heaven. And heaven is shouting. Heaven is screaming. Heaven is filled with super fans, right? There's like wigs on, painted faces, big foam fingers, they're going crazy. The stands are erupting. The away team is cheering and singing. And this is all about the return of Christ, right? This is all about the return of Jesus and how excited heaven is to see Jesus come back. I hope that you are that excited I hope that we are that excited. I hope that we want that. You know, that you want Jesus to come back. And not just as, a, as lip service. Don't just say, oh yeah, sure. Kind of, you know, he'll come back someday and that'll be cool, I guess. You know, if I'm around to see it. Not like that. Not like in a, not like in a nonchalant, casual way. But are you like foam finger, painted face? I'm going to put on a wig. Excited. Like, are you that excited? Are you a way team is going to win excited? That Jesus is coming back. You know, there's probably things in your life that you're looking forward to right now. And you're probably looking forward to them more than you are looking forward to Jesus returning. You could be looking forward to getting married. You're like, I don't want Jesus to return before I get married. Maybe you're looking forward to that vacation this summer. You're like, I really want to go. Right? I, I paid good money for my tickets to Maui or Florida. Maybe you're looking forward to retirement. You want to enjoy some peaceful retirement years. And to be honest, you're looking forward to those things more than you are looking forward to the return of Christ. Why? Well, it's because we love living here. <laughs> we love living here, don't we? We love the earth. Of course we do. But I think it's those reminders. You're not on the home team. You are not the home team. And it's, it's not okay. It's not okay to root, root, root for the home team. You can enjoy living here. Absolutely. Enjoy it. Enjoy living here. But we just can't love it too much. This is not our home. This is not our home. I'll give you my best uh, comparison. Okay? Because I, uh, as a pastor, I do a lot of weddings. 
right? I do a lot of weddings. So maybe in the last 20 years or so, I've done close to, well, I've done over, I've done over 150 weddings in all kinds of different places, right? All kinds of different places, all kinds of different venues. I've done weddings in backyards and I've done weddings in cathedrals, in chapels, in country clubs, uh, even out on the golf course, right? And even though all the different wedding venues change and colors change, styles of uh, dress change, right? One thing never changes. And that's the couple that's standing there, the bride and the groom. Every wedding has them, right? (laughs) There's always a bride and a groom standing before me. And I'll always do a little sit down with the bride and groom before, you know, where I meet them and talk to them and ask them questions. And I got to tell you, it's always the same. <laughs> the groom is happy. He's happy, right? Uh, sometimes he gets a little weepy, but for the most part, he's happy. Uh, mostly he's happy that he's just upright, <laughs> upright and breathing and conscious, right? That he, he made it through it. He's like, okay, you know, that was, that, I'm here for her, right? And uh, it's not the same with the bride. She's excited, overjoyed, over the moon, over the top. She wants everything to be perfect, right? Down to the forks and the napkins and the way the plates are positioned on the table, to the way the flowers are hung, to the way the bridesmaids are wearing their dresses, to the shoes the groomsmen are wearing. Every single detail has been meticulously gone over by her because she wants it to be perfect, because this is something she has been looking forward to and waiting for her entire life. So there's nobody who's more excited or more happy in the room than the bride. And you know what? That's supposed to be us. (laughs) That is supposed to be us. In the biblical picture, in the marriage between heaven and earth, we are the bride. The church is the bride of Christ, and we are supposed to be that excited that happy. Our anticipation of seeing Jesus return again is supposed to be that over the top. And I pray it is for you too. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.